I spent a good part of the day yesterday setting up and modifying uh, this Excel spreadsheet, which I constructed to help us uh, compute uh, uh, the sums of forces and moments uh, and compute uh, do wrench calculations uh, on statics problems. And um, it's I wanted to go over and show you a little bit how to use it. I apologize, it's not as completely organized, neatly set up as it might be. And if someone wants to take up that task of sort of reorganizing it uh, in a little bit better fashion uh, for people to be able to look at it and use it clearly, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, but right now, let me show you exactly how to use this with a particular problem here. The problem here is out of the Hibbler statics book. Um, so we say uh, we have four parallel forces, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force equivalent to the given force system and locate its point of application on the slab. So what we need to do is we need to uh, uh, want to take all these five, four forces, uh, replace them by a single force uh, act operating at some point on the slab where that single force gives you the same net result of these four forces and the four moments generated by each of those four forces. So I want to show you how to use the spreadsheet in order to do that. Uh, to begin, I'm going to take start with this force. I'll call this F1. This is a 600 Newton force just pointing in the negative Z direction. Notice that this is a, a standard right-handed coordinate system. Positive X is going in this direction positive y in that direction, and positive z is going up. So this force has uh, a, um, uh, since it's pointing in straight down, it has no x component, no y component, and a negative 600z component. So if I put that force on my spreadsheet, I have 0, 0, negative 600. Now I also want to write the position vector for that force, which I'm going to call r1. So that's the vector going from my origin here out to the, where the 600 Newton force is applied. Notice that that has an X component, but no Y or no Z component. And the X component here is 8 meters. Okay. Now, uh, this problem really shows um, uh, a gripe that I have with the, these Hibbler problems, if you like, in that um, the... Uh, the drawings are sometimes unclear or ambiguous and that the drawing shows the 8 meters going out to some position right here uh, where I think it should be drawn out here so you can see that 8 meter is going all the way out to the end where this force is being applied. So, so anyway, uh, then I write down what the, uh, uh, what the R vector, the position vector is for that force F1, and I have 8 meters, 0, 8i, 0j, 0k. Okay, force F2 is going to be this negative 500 Newton force going in the negative z direction. This is going right at the origin here. Uh, there's no x component, no y component, again, just a negative z component of 500 Newtons. So that force F2 here is 0, 0 negative 500k. And then the position for that force F2, it's right at the origin, so that 0i, zero 0i, uh, zero 0j, zero and 0k. Okay, now let's look at F3. I take F3 to be this force right here, acting uh, in, sort of in the, in the uh, near the middle of the slab. And um, here we, we see that indeed this force will have both an X component and a Y component. And the X component I take to be the, the width of the slab here, 8 minus 2. So I'll write, the, uh, say, 6i for the X component. The Y is 5, and the Z uh, of the position vector, that is the vector going from the origin out to B, has no Z component. So I write that down here, and you see that uh, for uh, this is F3, uh, sorry, F3, R is uh, 6i, 
uh, plus 5j plus 0k. So that's the position vector for R3. Now F4, the final force, is the one here right at this edge. Um, and this force is also pointing uh, straight down. And um, it has, so this is a negative 400 Newton force in the z direction, no x and y direction. As like this force is a plus 100 Newton force here in that position. So we have then, uh, okay, there's F3, 0, 0, 100. F4 should be uh, 0, 0 and negative 400 right here. Now notice I have a, I have a uh, place to fill in for an F5 force, but there is no F5 force. So everything there is 0. So we have negative 400 K Newton. Uh, the K is the unit vector in the Z direction. So negative 400 Newton times K for the F4 force and the, and the R vector going out to F4 has no X component, no Z component, uh, but it has a uh, Y component of plus 10. So R4 is 0I plus 10J and 0K. So this is filling in the position vectors and the force vectors uh, for those four forces. Now the spreadsheet is set up so it will sum up all the X, Y, and Z components to give me a composite force, sum F, the 0i, 0j, negative 1400k. You can add these up uh, to, uh, uh, to verify that. Um, this is, um, you, you can see uh, we have uh, 6, negative 11, negative 15, plus 100 gives me negative 14. Then uh, the, the spreadsheet will also compute uh, the moment by computing uh, R cross F for each, uh, each force and position vector combination. So we get uh, moment one, which is R1 cross F, uh, becomes, uh, computes it, gives me 4800J. Uh, moment two here uh, does uh, something similar. R cross F, because it goes right through the origin, the moment produced by force F2 is zero, and then we do the same thing for F3, for, uh, for the force F3 to compute M3, and force F4 to compute M4. Uh, notice here, I also compute the magnitude of the net force, and I give you the direction cosines of that net force. Down here, I give you the total uh, moment vector here uh, in this line, but where, however, I did not compute uh, the, uh, the direction cosines like I did here for the force vector. I just give you the total magnitude moment vector right in here. Okay, now, so with that, um, we want to look at what is the unit vector in the uh, for the resultant force here, what's the unit vector for the resultant force? And that's just given by these three direction cosines. I'm calling that U1. Now we want to compute the, um, the unit vector for the part of the moment which is going to be perpendicular. Uh, so we have a total moment force here, but we want to break that up into a component which is parallel to the force vector here and perpendicular to the force vector there. So um, I first make, I compute here, in fact, to, I check to see what is the component of the, uh, uh, of the dot product for mo some of the moment dot with some of the f and that's zero. So that's telling me that some of the moments and some of the Fs are indeed perpendicular. So the entire moment calculation is going to be for a force, uh, uh, for a, a, a moment which is perpendicular to the net resultant force. So that indicates that. So I then have that the component of the moment parallel to the, to the resultant of the force 
is just zero, zero, zero. There's no component uh, parallel to the force, which means then, of course, that the entire uh, resultant moment vector is perpendicular to uh, the force, which I show here. Uh, it has uh, 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 components uh, negative 3500i, 4200j, and 0k, which is exactly what we have here, what we would expect if this vector was, in fact, perpendicular to the f vector. Okay, now what I want to do here is I want to compute the unit vector of the uh, perpendicular moment component. So, and I'm calling that unit vector u2. So what do I do? I compute the magnitude, and then I take uh, the magnitude of the perpendicular component. Here I have is 5467. And I take that, and I divide it into negative 3500, Giving, giving me a negative 0.64i, and then I divide this 5467 into 4200 here, giving me 0.768j. So this then is the unit vector for the uh, component of the resultant moment, which is perpendicular to the force. Okay, so what I want to do then as I say, to compute the position vector that I want to put the resultant force to generate this particular perpendicular moment. So what I do is I take to compute the unit vector for the position of the resultant force. This is the unit vector of the R vector that goes to the result for, resultant force is u1 cross u2, which I compute here, then u1 cross 2 is 0.768i and 0.640j and 0k. So I compute this unit vector right in here, and then I compute the magnitude of the d uh, component by taking then the, uh, uh, the magnitude of the... Uh, I say here, look, it's x23 divided by n11. So x23 is this magnitude, the magnitude of the perpendicular component of the moment, okay, divided by n11, and n11 is the magnitude of the resultant force. So uh, that gives me then what the magnitude of the position vector is. It is 3.905. This is the unit vector for the position vector that has that magnitude. So I take this magnitude, multiply by this to give me the i component. I take this magnitude, multiply by this to give me the j component. And I take this magnitude and multiply by zero to give me the k component. So we have then that the position vector where the resultant force should be applied in order to produce the same total resultant force and the same total resultant moment as d equals 3i uh, plus 2.5j plus 0k. So that's where the force should be applied. Now we can check this here by looking, at the, this is a problem that's worked out in the book. Okay, notice first of all they get the magnitude of the resultant force is 1400 newtons in the negative z direction. That's what we computed, negative 1400 newtons. They, then they sum up the moments, okay? And they sum up the moments uh, and they find the resultant moment in the x direction uh, and the resultant moment in the y direction here. So there they get the um, the y coordinate then of that is um, uh, here. I'm trying to read this. They get y is negative 3,500. What did we have as the uh, resultant component here? Negative 3,500 right there. And then they have 
the x component is 4200 for the net uh, resultant moment, which is we also got 4200 in OK. And then they uh, compute the, uh, the position on the slab where the force needs to be applied. They have y is 2.5 meters, x is 3 meters. And what did we compute? We computed that right over here. Uh, D is 3i, so x is 3. And y is 2.5j, so that's the j component. So this is how to use this uh, Excel program. Um, if you find any errors uh, in it, because I haven't tried it with all possible cases, uh, I've tested it a bit. Uh, like with this example, but there, there could still be some errors in the computations done by the program. So this gives me the answer to the problem, which is the net result in force of negative 1400 in the k, uh, negative, uh, k, negative z direction, and then it gives me the position where I want to apply that force on the slab, which is x equal 3 and y equals 2, 5. Now, just before I close here, just let me show you a couple other things on the spreadsheet I set up. Um, I have it here where it just computes the cross product of R cross F, you know, R being the position and F being the force, at, and that's to give me a moment. So I can put in one force at a time and compute uh, the, uh, the moment for that force, and this came in handy a bit when I was trying to debug the program. I, as I was going through setting it up, I found a mistake or two. And it will al also computes uh, the, uh, the magnitude and the direction cosines for the R vector and the F vector, uh, given the numbers directly in this problem. And I set it up so it does a uh, a scalar triple product here, which you might uh, need to use at some point for one thing or another. And then here I also have it set up so it will do the dot product of A dot B. Uh, and we use this to find uh, how much of one vector is in the direction of the other vector, um, or to find um, the, uh, to see if the vectors are parallel or perpendicular typically where the dot product is used. And then I also set up something uh, that is similar to, but doesn't have all the bells and whistles on it, that this does, in case you wanted to run and test a separate set of forces and position vectors. Uh, so this does all of that, but it doesn't give us, um, uh, doesn't do these um, net wrench calculations like I do in here. Okay, so with that, um, I'm uh, posting this uh, uh, for, uh, for all of you students um, in a statics class so you can check this out.